All right, guys. All right, Danny Williamson. It's Sunday night, and that means it's Sunday night service. All right, guys, Danny Williamson. It's Sunday night, so that means it's Sunday night service. And tonight, we are talking common sense, practical ways to protect your body all year long, not just during COVID-19 season or flu season or any of the seasons that are going to be going forward, right? So tonight, that's what we're talking about. As you guys get logged on, hit your heart buttons, hit your like buttons, tell me you're here, let me know you're here so that I know because there's a whole new setup on Facebook on my end when you go live and it looks totally different and I don't see if anybody's here. So make some comments, share this. You can click start a, uh, start a watch party or share, do that because you're going to want to take notes tonight. I have tons and tons and tons of things to share with you. So you may want to actually use your camera, use your phone and take pictures when I show you some things back here, some supplements. Doesn't mean that you have to use these. It's just that, um, excuse me, you may want to take some pictures so you can um, take some notes. So anyway, I'm not going to wear this, but I just wanted to have it on so that you guys could see. I have a mask from Vogue Mask. V O G M A S K dot com, and they are sold out right now um, worldwide, actually. So, uh, well, actually, they may have some back in stock. But anyway, guys, as soon as you're on here, heart buttons, like buttons, let me know you're here. Let me know you're here and um, share it. So, what a week. Holy cow, what a month. What a month it's been. What a month it has been. I don't have wine tonight. I am drinking bone broth, hot bone broth. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's good. I hadn't even tasted it yet. Hot bone broth from Brothers Bone Broth, you know, just trying to keep the mucus secretions down and all of that. So we're going to discuss all of that. So as of today, which is April the 19th, 2020 at 2.08 this afternoon when I was doing this, currently in Tennessee, we have, we have had 148 deaths from COVID-19, at least 7,070 confirmed cases, 724 people have been hospitalized, and 3,344 patients have recovered 100%. So far in Tennessee, we've had 97,098 patients, that's of this afternoon, have been tested for COVID-19. How many of you all have been tested? Have any of you been tested? Actually, hit your heart buttons if you've been tested at all. Um, I would love to know if you have. I haven't been tested. Uh, I've considered it, but I haven't been. I uh, felt so bad this week, I almost went and got tested, but I haven't been. So anyway, we're going to talk about what is it. We're going to just very briefly talk about the science because you guys have listened to the science ad nauseum on this. We're going to talk about common sense ways to build your immune system. But, you know, how, how in the world does the virus start in our body? I'm not talking about where it started in, in China. So research, just, researchers have discovered that the SARS-CoV-2, C-O-V-2, is the virus, right? This is the novel coronavirus that leads to COVID-19 which is the disease, okay? So the virus leads to the disease by invading the body and attacking the angiotensin converting enzyme two receptors in the lungs and the gut. This is why this is a very serious um, lung infection. So the angiotensin receptors, or we're gonna call them ACE2 receptors, right? Um, they help protect the lungs. They help protect the lungs. They help protect part of our immune system. All right. They are in, in our lungs and they're mainly in the periphery of the lungs. And apparently when you do a CAT scan of somebody's lungs with COVID-19, you can tell along the periphery where the, uh, the periphery is just really damaged. I was listening to Dr. Leo Gallon today talk about this. He's a brilliant internal medicine doctor in New York City, and he was talking about this. So, you know, COVID-19 binds to the ACE receptors. It damages the lungs, and that's what increases our pneumonia risk in these patients. 
younger patients, younger people, they have healthier lungs. They have, they have more ACE2 receptors in there. And it's actually an enzyme apparently, um, which I know about ACE, but I didn't know this, this deep of it right here. So here's what happens. Here's, here's what happens. The incubation period from exposure to illness. So if I got exposed right now, say Harlan, he's the only one here, Harlan exposed me. The incubation, incubation period is two to 14 days. It's a long time with an average of being five days. Okay. Unlike the flu, COVID-19 appears to start gradually. Those of you who've had the flu, boom, it's like a ton of bricks that hit you out of the blue. COVID-19 isn't like that as a rule. It is um, slow. So usually it starts with fatigue, maybe some joint pain, right? Um, a sore throat, okay? A mild dry cough, sometimes a stuffy nose or congestion, sometimes some nausea and loss of appetite. But the, but the key thing between this and the flu is that it generally starts slowly, all right? So you just wake up and you got a scratchy throat and then it, you know, turns into some aches and a, a slight cough. For some people though, the very first symptom is abdominal pain and zero respiratory complaints. I don't know if you all remember this this week. I felt terrible. There were two days this week that I thought, oh my gosh. And I saw patients, I didn't really say much at work about it, but I felt horrible and it was all stomach. It was all stomach. There was no respiratory. I haven't had any respiratory problems. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm one of those atypical people that's going to get this and it's going to start in the gut and something's going to happen. Sometimes people lose their sense of taste and smell actually frequently, not sometimes. You lose your sense of taste and smell. And I've, I've never done that. Some people have diarrhea. Remember, I was having gut issues this week. Also, I didn't know this, purple discoloration of the toes has recently been described as a presenting symptom. Purple discoloration of the toes. What? Well, I, I, you can bet when I was listening to this this afternoon, sitting outside, I, the first thing I did was look around my computer and look at my toes to see what color they are. And they look fine. They look fine. Look at your toes. Wait till this is over. Then look at your toes. All right. The initial respiratory complaints typically last about five days. Initial. Now, this is important to remember. We're going to talk about phase one and phase two of this disease tonight. They last about five days and that's followed by recovery. This is phase one. Okay. Phase one is what 80% of the people who get infected with COVID-19 experience, just phase one, right? Those, those slight symptoms, maybe a little achy, maybe a little sore throat, maybe some joint pain, maybe some, you know, stuffy nose, nausea, things like that. 80% of the people, that's the only phase that they ever have. And that's key. Less than 20% move on into phase two. And that starts after five days. Phase two starts, and Tammy, this is your friend, your cousin right now. Your, your cousin went from phase one, and I am so sorry about this, went from phase one to phase two, which is increasing uh, respiratory complaints, right? Increasing cough, shortness of breath, pneumonia, or symptoms of pneumonia. This is when our ACE2 receptors, remember this virus attaches, I mean, I'm sorry, attacks, well, attaches to as well, the ACE2 receptors in our lungs and those ACE2 receptors help keep our immune system in check. And then once they are bound to and attacked, then our immune system is under fire here. So phase two, which is less than 20% of the people move into phase two, increasing respiratory problems, cough, pneumonia, things like that, all that mucus building up. Remember, this is a copious amount of mucus, a mucoid disease. And people, you know, it's as if you're drowning and, and sometimes they do. ACE2 receptors are not functioning. They speed up, um, are not functioning. And so um, they're not able to decrease inflammation in the body. 
Then we get into neurological symptoms, things like seizures start to happen, possible strokes, mood swings, behavioral changes, all those things have been described during this phase two of um, COVID-19. Whether we are sick or whether we are well infected people, because remember, probably 80% of the people who get infected don't even have symptoms of this or light, slight symptoms. Infected people shed the virus in secretions for several weeks and may still be contagious eight days after their symptoms end. So we're spreading it with coughing, sneezing, honking around, things like that. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna talk about, my gosh, not how do we eradicate COVID-19 because that's not the, that's not gonna happen. We're not eradicating COVID-19. We're talking about the things that we've been doing, slowing the spread, slowing down the healthcare, the burden on the healthcare system, things like that. We're talking about building your immune system up because COVID-19 is here. It's here, it's here to stay is what the research shows and it's what the experts say, it's not going anywhere. So this is going to be, going forward for us, this is what we're gonna have to battle. It's like the flu, every year we have a flu season. Well, it looks like every year we might have a COVID-19 season as well. Of course, we don't really know what the season is because we don't know it's new. We don't know for sure that it dies out when summer comes. There's so much that we don't know that we're going to talk about tonight. Right. We're going to talk about building your immune system up so that you are part of that 80 percent that don't even know they have this virus. You know, children don't get this, especially under nine. It's rare for them to get this under nine. They have a whole lot of ACE receptors on their lungs. And as a rule, they're healthier. But I want you to know something right now. Did you know that the, the United States kids are some of the sickest kids in the world in the world? Um, we have some of the unhealthiest children in the world and we have got to protect these babies with all the things that we're talking about tonight that we're going to be talking about tonight. So avoidance of exposure should be the number one strategy, which is what we're doing, self-quarantining, right? Um, and that's of course what's received, received the most attention worldwide, right? Self-quarantining. By avoiding the infection, you help prevent the spread to other people and of course your community, right? Quarantines. Now, this is important to know in case you guys have been a little confused about quarantines. Quarantines will delay the spread of infection and they reduce the burden on the healthcare system, right? So, meaning those hospital beds in the hospital, hopefully they go unfilled, right? The They built out at Vanderbilt uh, 150 beds or something in the parking garage and they haven't even used it. That's what self quarantining is doing. That was the purpose of the entire request to self quarantine, slow the spread, decrease the burden on the immune, on the uh, healthcare system. But those things are not designed to eradicate the virus. Again, we're not eradicating the virus. Most people, the research shows, most people in the United States are likely to be exposed to COVID-19 over the next year, says Dr. Galland. The virus is not going away. It's a virus that we're going to have to live with worldwide going forward. Okay. That being said, what are the common sense, practical things that we're going to do to build our immune system up? Okay. And that is exactly, it's quite funny as I was going through all this and reading, I mean, I've been reading for a month on what people are saying and it's exactly the six steps to healing that I preach every single day. That's on the front of this Facebook page right here. Danny Williamson Wellness. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress and cultivate community. Y'all hear Harlan, bless his heart. He's having a hard time breathing. Um, it's the exact steps. And so it's like, holy cow, this is what I've been teaching for, for a decade eat well. We're going to go through them tonight. You already know that. Then we're going to go through some, I mean, some supplements and things that we know for a fact help with building your immune system, because that's what this whole thing is about. Remember, it's not about getting rid of COVID-19. It's about staying healthy during the season. So you don't contract COVID-19, or if you do contract it, you're not on a respirator. Okay. And, and you're not deathly ill. Eat well, 
holy cow, no, that's number one, eat well. One ingredient food. What have I been teaching forever to you all? And on Facebook or Instagram more so than here, I show you guys all my cooking fails and successes with one ingredient food. No package, no process, no bags, no can, no tubes, no rolled, no fake man-made food. Now, what we're experiencing is a lot of people are wanting comfort food, right? They're wanting comfort food. They're wanting, they're not wanting a big old glass of bone broth. Woo. Me included, by the way, they're wanting a big old glass of wine or a gin and tonic or a vodka and soda or vodka and tonic or whatever. Um, that's not at all what we need. We don't need alcohol during this. Alcohol decreases your immune system. It does not build your immune system up. Plus alcohol, a lot of it breaks down to sugar and we know sugar increases your, decreases your immune system, right? One ingredient in food. Next week on Sunday night service, you guys are going to be so excited. I've got Shondi, uh, in fact, I think she's on here tonight. Um, Borup, B-O-R-U-P. -O I can't, I can't remember. Bo, I mean, I can't pronounce it. Borup. She is showmehealthyliving.com. And I'm going to talk about that at the end here. She is going to be our guest on here talking about cooking one ingredient food. This is what she's made her living out of in her life. And she's got a great website that I'll put up here, but one ingredient food. We need to be eating all the colors of the rainbow. Do you see that? Look at those oranges and greens. You can't see down in there, but there's sweet potatoes and there's limes and there's onions and there's uh, cucumbers and peppers, and bell peppers and kiwi and cu all the things are in there. That's what we need to be doing. One ingredient food. Today I roasted red beets and I cooked up collard greens and kale and I took the beet leaves greens and I made, put those in there as well. And then I had, I had some potatoes because that's what we had. I normally don't buy potatoes, but they were in my Misfits Market box. One ingredient food. You've got to be eating enough protein to keep your immune system up. And I don't think many of us do. Keeping your protein levels in check, not super amounts of protein, but half, so approximately, now don't get me on this, but approximately half of your body weight in grams of protein a day. So I weigh 130 pounds. I fluctuate between 128 and 132, somewhere around there. So I'm going to cut it in the middle, 130. I need 65 grams of protein a day. I don't need much more than that. I mean, if I guess if I was some sort of massive uh, bodybuilder, maybe some more, but 65 grams of high quality protein a day. Now you can get that from, you know, a protein shake and some lean fish, chicken, lamb, turkey, salmon, halibut, things like that, nuts, things like that. You can build your protein up, but you need to have good protein in order to keep your immune system built up. Cooking at home, people, you cannot eat out and be healthy. It's a fact. If I've worked in restaurants my whole life, my dad owned a restaurant for 30 years. My stepmom was the general manager for 34 years of a big restaurant in, Marsh, in uh, Grand Rivers, Kentucky. I'm just telling you, I know what goes on in restaurants and I know what they do to make your food taste good. And trust me, you can't eat out and eat healthy. It's not possible. You have got to cook at home. You have to. And this season, we've been given a pause button a stop, reset, refuel, recharge, reflect moment here. And I'm telling you, you need to get the pots and pans out and you need to start cooking at home. Easy peasy, one ingredient foods, not in a box or a bag. Decrease the alcohol. My personal opinion is zero dairy at all. Now I've seen zero research on this. I don't think you need to eat dairy anyway. If I can't eat dairy, nobody needs to eat dairy. <laughs> I've got a really bad sensitivity to dairy. My hands swell up like little piggies um, and I just can't breathe as well. Well, this is a mucus disease, right? Where I mean, it's not a mucus disease, but it's a mucoid disease where we have a whole lot of mucus in the lungs and people just drown, right? Well, what is dairy? It's mucus like. It's gunky, thick, cow snot like um, secretions and we don't need to be eating it. And so it makes common sense to me that you would not want cheese or half and half or yogurt or ice cream or uh, cottage cheese, sour cream, butter, cheese, cheese, any of that for sure during any of this. You don't want anything that's going to gunk up the lungs. If you have asthma, if you have bronchitis, if you have pneumonia, if you have chronic sinusitis, sinus infections, you take dairy out immediately and you start to see symptoms improve.
because it decreases inflammation. So my suggestion is no dairy at all. You want to drink as much hot things as possible. Now I did see some things on this online. Um, I don't know if there's any research on it, but hot broth, hot tea, hot lemon water, hot coffee, just hot things to keep the mucus secretions down. Oh my Lord, Karen, a recipe book. Are you crazy? I don't, um, I say that lovingly, by the way. I don't, um, I just don't know if anybody buy a recipe book. I'm just like so basic that I just, anyway, maybe they would. I think we're going to put recipes in the book, by the way, but just basic common things that I eat, like simple, simple, simple things. No dairy whatsoever. Drink tons and tons of hot liquid, right? Decrease the mucus. Keep the lungs moving. Laugh a lot. Keep those lungs moving. Cough. Carry on. Hot bone broth, hot tea, hot coffee, hot lemon water, all the things, and no sugar at all. When we're stressed, we tend to eat sugar because that's what we want. We want to go to comfort food. Sugar decreases your inflammation, okay? Eat well. It's the number one step, I'm telling you. And next week, we're going to have a whole hour dedicated to this with Shondi in her kitchen out in Montana. I'm so excited. Sleep well. Well, that's number two. That's my number two step, and that's the big one. Guess what? Your body heals when you sleep. It is as simple as that. If you can't sleep, you're creating systemic inflammation over your body. Sleep is an anti-inflammatory. It's way better than any anti-inflammatory you're going to take. It decreases oxidative stress. Remember, oxidative stress is what builds up in your pipes, right? In your, in your pipes. What the heck? It builds up in your veins, your arteries and all that stuff. It's like rusty pipes, oxidative stress is. Antioxidants like A, C, D, E, things like that. They mop up the oxidative glutathione, uh, the master antioxidant in your body. So sleep is an antioxidant, right? It helps your body stay supple and uh, decreases immune, uh, um, um, increase, it decreases inflammation in your body, it builds your immune system up. Sleep, 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 no electromagnetic fields in your bedroom at all. No computers, no cell phones, right? No uh, wireless routers have to be at least two walls away. I mean, anything to help you sleep. Your bedroom has got to be a sanctuary. I cannot get away from the electromagnetic fields right now. My computer's plugged in because I don't want to go dead in the middle of this and all that. But when your um when you cross that threshold into your bedroom at night, it needs to be a sanctuary. It needs to be clean. It needs to be cool. I would turn it down to 55 degrees. I took a picture there now. I woke up in my bedroom. My house was 54 degrees. I forgot and left all the windows open and went to bed. And it was that cold night this week. I slept like a log. Um, melatonin. Melatonin, melatonin, melatonin. Now it's a big deal for your immune system. And I've learned a lot about melatonin. I still have a whole lot more to learn because I've, I've really gotten myself all, I don't react poorly to melatonin, but melatonin goes up at night as the sun goes down. Cortisol rises in the morning and drops at night. Melatonin rises at night and drops in the morning. So it's a beautiful circadian rhythm it's supposed to be. Well, it's all messed up because we've got these computers and we've got these lights and we've got all these things going on. Melatonin's made in the pineal gland or pineal gland, pineal gland right here. And through lights and computers and all those things, we have absolutely destroyed that. So we need to make sure our melatonin is rising. Melatonin is also a major anti-inflammatory. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory and it's a piece of the COVID-19 uh, protocol that we're going to talk about. And Dr. Lindsay Berkson swears by it in high doses, high doses. Now I don't take over three milligrams, but high doses for it. So we have to eat well. And Shondi's on here. I'm so excited. Um, Shondi, yay, say something and put your website up here, by the way, while you're here. Um, eat well, sleep well, move. Oh wait, on sleep. Remember a good night's sleep starts with a good morning. Do you know what that means? Uh, get outside in the morning, get your feet to the earth, the wet grass, your bare feet to the earth in the morning, go have your coffee tomorrow morning outside as the sun's coming up would be ideally. But if the sun's already up, whatever, that's fine. Because as those light, as the light gets in your eyes, it signals your body, right? To be awake. 
to make the cortisol that we need. And then the, the morning light does that. And then the evening light, the colors of the sun going down signals your body to start to make melatonin. So a good morning makes for a good night. And I would try to get outside in the morning and get outside in the evening as the sun's going down right now, preferably, but not, not while I'm talking. You can um, take the phone out there and go outside, okay? Eat well, sleep well, move well. You have got to move your body during this. We are, I'm sure many of us are not exercising like we should and like we used to. So um, you've got to move your body. It decreases inflammation if you are exercising correctly. Now, if you're doing something um, that increases inflammation in your body, if you feel worse after you exercise, then you're not eating. I mean, you're not doing the right kind of exercise. Your body needs, your brain needs to feel better. You need to have more endorphins and you need to have more energy. If you have to lay down an hour after you exercise and take a two hour nap, then that's the wrong kind of exercise for you. That's creating inflammation in your body. And we don't want that at all. All right. So we got to move, get your feet on the earth, get your face to the sun. Okay. It is so important. And yes, starting your morning off outside with your feet to the earth, your face to the sun sets you up for the day and set you up for the evening. And it's fascinating. And, and these are simple little common sense things that all have research behind them. I'm not just making this stuff up, but you got to move your body. I have walked more. I probably won't be able to find it on here, but I have walked more the last um, month than I have in all of 2019. And so, and it's been great. And my, my phone keeps track of it and all that stuff. And so, you know, that's good. Get up, get out move your body for crying out loud. Okay. Um, eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well. We're not going to get into this whole poop thing because we got to get into the supplements and building your immune system thing. But pooping well, Karan Krishna from Microbiome Labs spent an hour. No, good Lord. Well, yeah, like an hour and 20 minutes last week um, talking about the gut and your immune system. You, if you did not watch that Sunday night service, you need to get on there. They, he's the makers of um, Megaspore and, I'm <clears throat> sorry, Mega Prebiotic. These are all things we're going to talk about that I found research and things on to help build your immune system up for this. That Their company owns that, that company. And um, that was an amazing hour and 20 minutes. You've got to poop, right? A good, healthy gut will poop a couple of times a day. Um, ideally it's, you know, like a number four on the Bristol stool chart. If you don't know what that is, it kind of looks like a sausage and curled up on the end a little bit, a little curly, um, poop well, you got to poop well, but you got to eat well to poop well. You got to move well to poop well. You got to sleep well to poop well. It's all connected. It's like that. What was it? The hip bones connected to the thigh bone. It's all connected to the gut and you've got to do all those things well in order for the gut to be well and to be effective. Okay. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress. We all know that stress, stress decreases your immune system. 100% decreases your immune system. So we got to decrease stress and I don't know the best way to do it during this because this week was a really stressful week for me. I woke up yesterday and my eyes, I had cried and cried. You know, we didn't get approved for that. Whoa, I'm about to burn up. I'm taking this off. Um, uh, we didn't get approved for the payroll protection plan this go around. Hopefully we will the next time. I have a great bank, Pinnacle Bank. They're amazing. Um, and but stress, I just felt my entire body just welling up and I cried and I cried and, you know, and, and, and you worry about your employees and sure, you know, things have got to be cut and all that. Stress decreases your immune system. So I'm way more susceptible to something happen to me as I am just on fire acting crazy in here by myself. Um, we have to bring our stress level down year round, not just now year round, whatever it takes to automate, eliminate and delegate the things in your life that need to be cut out, do it. And you know what? We've been given an opportunity. Now, I don't know how you all believe about this, but I believe we've been given an opportunity to reflect and make some changes in our life. I think when 
Um, God wants to get your attention. When mother nature wants to get your attention, they will do it. And they've gotten our attention. And I've got some things on, you know, that I need to change in my life and I will. Um, and some things you can't change, right? That you, so you shouldn't be stressing about it, but it is, I realize if we've lost our job, if you've lost over half of your patients, you know, due to this and, you know, not being able to do telehealth or them losing their job and not being able to pay for telehealth. If you are, you know, if you're an employer, employer who's having to cut people, all those things, it's about impossible to decrease stress, right? Or if you're just a nervous Nelly and you're worried to death, you're going to get it. You know, again, it's difficult to decrease stress, but I am telling you right now, what are you going to do? Well, for me, I believe in a higher power. I believe in my God. And so, man, I have turned, now I, I talk to God all day in between patients. I pray every morning. I pray over patients. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I am a talker to God. I talk. I was not voted most talkative for nothing. My senior year in high school, I talk to God. I talk to anybody. I talk to Harlan all day. So uh, for me, it's God. And I'm going to pray. And, you know, and even a little bit more, I'm going to be down on my hands and knees and I'm digging in that Bible and I'm looking around and you guys have sent me Bible verses and all. For me, that's comforting. And that brings down my stress level because I can tell you right now, he's never out. He's never not shown up in my life. So for me, that's who I turn to is, is my God. How you get through life, how people get through life without God is beyond me. And I know a whole lot of people do. They do because there's a whole lot of people out there that aren't Christians. But um, my friend Teresa Weaver today, I don't know if she's on here or not uh, yet. Um, Teresa Weaver sent me, she tagged me on a church service this morning and I was cooking, cooking greens up and all that today. And I watched that church, church service and oh my gosh, it was amazing. He was on fire and he was preaching to an empty congregation. I don't know how people do that. It's hard enough to me just talking to you guys right here for me. I mean, to an empty congregation, that man was anointed by God and it was an amazing service. So listen to praise and worship music. If that's your thing, get online and listen to people preach, just dig deep in the Bible. So whatever it is, that's going to help you decrease stress, right? Cut out anything that's not necessary financially. If it's not extremely useful or extremely beautiful, get rid of it. Pray, deep breathing, meditation, yoga, walking meditations, you know, uh, practice gratitude, get a gratitude journal out. I'm terrible with that. I don't journal. I'm sure I should. I don't do, I just speak it all day long. I don't write it down and probably I should. I don't know. You know, watch movies with your family, play games with your kids. If you've got them at home, you know, I don't know what works best for you, but whatever it is to decrease stress, I need you to do it because when your stress levels down, your immune system goes up. It's the stressed out ones who get sick first, just like pregnant women. Pregnant women's immune systems are down. If there's a whole room of people out there, who's going to get sick? It's going to be the pregnant woman. And it's a pregnant woman in the group because her immune system is down. So pregnant women have to keep their immune system up tremendously. I've been sending cards and letters through the mail, through the snail mail, because you guys have been sending my mom cards and letters and she read them to me yesterday, many of them through the window. I've got pictures. I haven't shared it yet. I was six feet away and she was so excited. She said, Danny, I keep reading these cards all the time. And I've been praying that I won't be depressed. My mom struggles really badly with depression. And um, she hasn't been depressed during this, but those cards and letters have kept her going. So, you know, write some cards and letters. I'm a big believer when you're giving to somebody else, it takes your mind off of yourself and what's going on with you. And even if it's just a letter and I've written more cards and letters lately than I have in a long, long time. Cultivate community. That's my six steps to healing. Sixth step. Well, community is huge and community is a big piece of your overall health. The people who live in the Mediterranean, who eat the Mediterranean lifestyle, the people who live in, in Europe, you know, community is a big part of their life. And if you've watched the news and you've watched on social media, you've seen how they have really, even during this isolation time we're in, they are doing things far apart, like singing in their apartment complex on the balconies. I saw a bunch of Italians toasting with their wine glasses. They had them on the ends of some huge sticks and they were all toasting out over the balconies, toasting with their wine glasses and salute. And 
cultivate community, whatever it takes, get on here, do, do FaceTime. My best friends and I, we've been FaceTiming. There's four of us nurse practitioners in town and we FaceTimed, you know, all four of us at the same time, whatever it takes, keep it going, your community. Many of you saw this was the third week in a row. So two of my neighbors and I were sitting together a month ago. We were social isolating in the backyard at my neighbor's drinking wine. And I said, you know what? We need to have a group, a community cookout on our little dead end side here. There's five houses, have a community cookout every Friday night at five o'clock. And we started it three weeks ago. And you've seen, we are 100, way more than six feet apart. Um, and I'm so loud, hell, I could be 20 feet apart from everybody and whisper and they can still hear me beautifully, clearly. But we, three weeks in a row, we have had the perfect weather and it's going to be perfect this Friday night as well. And we've all cooked something different. This week was even the most fun because I've lived here seven years and we're all friendly and we all have each other's back, but we've never bonded together as a little street and just spent hours together. Five to eight this past Friday night, I've never laughed so hard in my life. We told stories, dirty stories, funny stories. We picked on each other. It was amazing. And we all picked our things up and we walked inside and I grilled. Well, everybody grilled. And um, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. That's cultivating community right there. And it takes effort. It takes getting off your couch and getting out, but it boost your immune system. It, but number one, we were outside. I was barefoot because I'm always barefoot. So um, we were outside. We were laughing. We were getting to know each other and we were building bridges, building community. It's key. All right. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Do you know laughter builds your immune system? It's huge. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress, cultivate community. Those are six steps right there that we can do to build our immune system up. Then we get into the nutritional strategies, okay, for confronting COVID-19. All right. My goal is that before our symptoms begin, right, that we are boosting our immune system year round or at least for sure at the beginning of early fall. So right, starting in August, maybe even the end of July, August, September. There are two phases to COVID-19. Now we talked about this phase one, 80% of the people have, many of them never know they have it. Then there's phase two and that's the bad part, right? Our innate immune system, innate, I-N-N-A-T-E, that's what's present with us from birth, right? That's our immune system that's ready to attack every invader and infection and virus and bacteria that's out there. That's our innate immune system. Its function, which is interesting, is um, enhanced or made better or supported by sleep and exercise. Okay. And it's interesting. Dr. Gall Gallen talks about the most important food component to that is protein. Protein deficiency impairs your innate, innate immune system. Okay. Your protein intake, okay, talks about the grams. We talked about that. So we're going to practice the six steps to healing, right? Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress, cultivate community. Then we're going to talk about the things in phase one that we can take. If you can take some of these year round, you could take them just, you know, <clears throat> seasonally. Vitamin D3. D3. D as in Danny, okay? Vitamin D right here. A thousand, Dr. Gallon says a thousand to five thousand international units a day, just as the standard dose, right? Um, when you're sick, you can ramp this up. Or if you have a very low D3 level, this is an anti, D is an antioxidant, right? It's, it's a pro hormone, actually. Um, and it's amazing for your immune system. D, this is one you could use during phase one and phase two. Probiotics, prebiotics. Now, this stuff came right off of Dr. Gallen's website and Dr. Lindsay Berkson, who's brilliant. Probiotics, prebiotics. Two things that uh, this is my prebiotic here. It's almost empty. I put my prebiotic in my protein shake when I drink it. Prebiotics help prepare your gut for the probiotics, right? And they help the probiotics work better. It's interesting. On the probiotics, he said specifically on here, there's two strains that are readily available, lactobacillus, especially lactobacillus plantarium, which actually we have in our ProBio 7, 
lactobacillus plantarium, which is found in sauerkraut and other fermented vegetables, which we're going to talk about with Shonda next week, because she is a certified ferment, ferment, fermentate, fermented. She's certified in fermentation. I'm not quite sure the word there on that, but um, ProBio 7 has got lactobacillus, um, lactobacillus plantarium in it. And then also look at that spore forming bacteria of the genus bacillus. And that's what megaspore is right there, which are normally found in soil. And again, megaspore is my favorite for that. So phase one, D3 for sure. During phase two, if you actually got COVID-19 and you were sick, you would stop your megaspore, you would stop your probiotic, they say, and your prebiotic, because those are ramping up your immune system. We don't want to ramp up the immune system, right? We do not want to ramp up the immune system whenever you're sick. You want to dial it down. So you would not take those during phase two. Mushrooms, turkey tail, reishi mushrooms. Now I drink a mushroom shake and you all may not like this. I do. I drink it. We, we keep it at the office. This is shiitake fermented mushrooms from Designs for Health. I love it. This morning I made it. I took pictures of it this morning, but I haven't shared it yet on Instagram. Um, I did a prebiotic in my shake and I put a bunch of stuff in it right there. Now that's not everybody's going to drink a shake every day. I don't sell these in the office, but you can get these anywhere. This is reishi mushrooms. This is shiitake and turkey tail and reishi. I think in here, mushrooms build your immune system up, right? They help build it up, but you do not want to use this during phase two. If in fact you got COVID-19, you would stop it. Um, dietary, dietary mushrooms have been around for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, right? But we use it to build our immune system up. It enhances innate immunity. They stimulate the release of immune balancing anti-inflammatory cytokines, right? So again, I drink the mushroom shake probably two or three times a week, not a ton. I'm taking these because I had them, the mushrooms, wherever those are. I already had these here and I had not started them, um, but I'm taking them now. In fact, I'm, I'm almost finished with that little one right there. So we would use that to ramp up our immune system as well as melatonin. Now, Dr. Gallen says 0 0.5 milligrams, half a milligram of melatonin is shown to improve the immune system. It's also been used for phase two as well. So you could still continue with the melatonin. Dr. Burks, Burks, Berkson, Lindsay Berkson, which I love, she uses it uh, in high doses, like 30 milligrams, 15 milligrams, 30 milligrams. And she uses it for cancer. There's a whole cancer protocol in melatonin, by the way. She had breast cancer. And um, it is, it's an amazing antioxidant melatonin is. And remember, it comes up naturally at night. So we can build our natural melatonin by, by turning the lights off and things like that and winding down and getting outside as the sun's going down. But melatonin, you can use phase one, phase two for sure. Now, I didn't know this. I learned this today that you can take vitamin C with it and apparently it enhances melatonin. I didn't know that as well as nitric oxide. Elderberry. Now, you all know I use one elderberry, which is Brothers Health Foods. I love this elderberry. It's organic. He makes it here locally. Elderberry's had some question marks, but we don't have any research that shows it's bad for COVID-19. But um, they enhance the innate immunity and they prevent viral infections for sure, or um, elderberry does when you're um, traveling, right, through the air and all that. Phase one, but not during phase two, because we do not want to ramp up the immune system during phase two. We're trying to cool it down. Your immune system's on fire, on fire. So we're trying to dampen it in phase two. So you wouldn't use this if you were actively fighting COVID-19, just like you would not actively, or you would not use mushrooms if you were actively doing it, or probiotics if you were actively fighting COVID-19. Curcumin. One of my all time favorites, and I use a lot of curcumin. We private label it. We use it so much. Curcumin, you can use during phase one and phase two, but for phase two for sure, because what does it do? It cools the inflammation down in your body. It doesn't ramp up your immune system. It cools the inflammation down. It decreases joint pain. Curcumin, turmeric, one of the greatest things you can do to decrease the inflammation in your body for sure. Phase one and phase two. Zinc, 
Of course, I don't have any zinc here by itself because zinc is on national back order, but it's in my patch right here, which has also got astragalus and elderberry, I'm sorry, echinacea and all kinds of things in this immune patch right here. This is what I use for my zinc. Now it only has 20 milligrams of zinc, but that's okay. That's fine. It's got a stra it's got astragalus. I don't know if these are yeah. Astragalus, green tea, echinacea, uh, some licorice, garlic, bromelain, olive leaf extract, andrographis, all the things that are amazing. This stuff is great. You can get this. We we keep it, but um you could get it. I'm not sure where you can get it actually. Um, but zinc is a great one. Now zinc is something you can get too much of. You can overdose on zinc. You can get way too much. Number one, it make you nauseated, sick as a dog if you don't take it with food a lot. But zinc can also, if you take too much zinc, it can um, throw off your balance of copper in your body. So you want a tiny little bit of copper, half a milligram, one milligram of copper in it. Um, or D3 during phase two. No, we would not use. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. You would use D3 during phase two. Hopefully we don't have to worry about that, Michelle. But yes, we could use it during phase two. Um, A and C as well. Uh, Reservatrol, which is found in the skins of grapes, which makes ACE2 more resilient. And that's what we want is resiliency in these lungs in the lungs and the gut, but Reservatrol, I don't have Reservatrol. I don't sell it at the office. I should, Dr. Deering swears by it. Designs for Health, the people who make this um, shake right here, they make a phenomenal Reservatrol. They really do. Um, so that's one that you can use during phase two, which helps cool the immune system down. Quercetin, right? So what foods are going to give you quercetin? I always have a hard time saying it, quercetin. Um, onions, apples, lots of fruits do. Um, I take a lot of quercetin every day because I take A and I, but I don't do it every day. I always do it in the, in the spring. I usually do it March, April, May, and I start back up in September. I've used this for 10 years. Dr. Kalb had this at the old office and it's got 50 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine in it, bromelain, stinging nettle, quercetin, vitamin C. It's got great things in it. And this may, and, and so my allergies have been almost nothing this year, almost nothing. This is the first year that I have taken it like multiple times a day. Cause you know how you go, you go, ah, you take things, you don't, whatever, you hear it, Harry Carey. I've been really adamant about my supplements the past six weeks. And my allergies have been almost nothing. I think this is the best antihistamine on the market. But quercetin is, um, oh, actually, quercetin is presently being studied in China as a drug treatment for COVID-19 based on research initiated at McGill University. It's great for allergies and all that um, as well. So they're studying that in probably a lot higher doses than what we have there. I think we have 300 milligrams. No, 400 milligrams. That's a high dose, actually. A high quality fish oil, phase two, phase two, phase two, a high quality fish oil. Now you can use it all the time, right? But for sure phase two, because what does fish oil do? Cools the immune system down, decreases inflammation in your body. And that's what we want. I am a huge fan of a good fish oil. I've used this same fish oil from Metagenics for probably seven or eight years, EPA DHA 720. We we private label it because it's one of my top four supplements in the office. Big fan of a good quality fish oil. Uh, just know where you get your fish oil. Know where the fish come from. Know that you do your own research on that one. You use that during phase two. You can use it during phase one as well. Vitamin C, phase one and phase two. Y'all have heard a ton about vitamin C. IV vitamin C, right? In super high doses, but you know, you're probably up to six grams a day is enough, 6,000 milligrams. You want to go until bowel tolerance, right? Until you have diarrhea. It's as simple as that. I would say no less than 3,000 milligrams a day. All you need is plain, cheap, buffered C. Don't let anybody tell you you need a very expensive vitamin C. You don't. What they've studied is plain, cheap vitamin C. All right, so buffered vitamin C, two, mil two capsules is 1,000 milligrams. It's cheap. It's $17. There's 120 capsules in there. I've used this same one for a long time as well. So if you start to get sick, this is huge. 1,000 milligrams an hour, an hour until you have diarrhea. You pop two capsules, 
every hour on the hour until you have diarrhea. Simple as that. Okay. You can use that phase one and phase two. N acetylcysteine. N acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione. It is an antioxidant that cools the body down. This the N acetylcysteine is a, is a game changer for a whole lot of people. I never would have thought about using it during COVID-19, but I was reading Dr. Hasse's information online and Dr. Galland and Dr. Berkson and, and then all kinds of other stuff. N-acetylcysteine, 900 milligrams. Now what Dr. Hasse says, 900 milligrams, like three times a day. That's like 2,700 milligrams, isn't it? Um, but it is an amazing antioxidant, N-acetylcysteine is. And remember, antioxidants mop up the free radicals in your body, decrease the rusty pipes in your body. A neti pot. I had to go dig mine out of the closet. I don't do a neti pot. I don't like a neti pot. I, I drowned to death in a neti pot, but ugh, I just don't like it. So what I use instead is colloidal silver. And I now this is on 100% forever back order because these came from China right here. But the silver that's in it is your straight up Argentine 23. There's nothing fancy. All they've done is put in a spray bottle. So you can get your colloidal silver and you can put it in a spray bottle and shoot it up your nose two or three sprays multiple times a day. Dr. Lindsay Berkson says, which is interesting, I had to go dig and dig and dig. I haven't used Afrin in years. In fact, this like probably expired four or five years ago. Um, <laughs> she says use Afrin. Where did I write that down? Three sprays times three, three sprays in each nostril, nostril for three days and then take three days off. But if you've ever used Afrin, and I'm afraid to do it on here because I haven't, and I, it kills everything. So remember, this is a respiratory virus. This is a droplet right, virus, right? So it's in the nose, it's in the ears, it's in the eyes, it's in the mouth. These are reasons we're not touching our face. Afrin, why not? I mean, I don't know. If it's going to kill something, why not? I'm not worried about getting addicted to it. I'm not worried about any of that. So don't send me nasty messages over that. These two things right here, this is one of my favorites, biocidin throat spray. My friend Lee Russell turned me on to this and biocidin years ago, and I did not use it like I should through all the years. But I can dang sure tell you now, I am spraying three sprays three or four times a day. I had a patient tell me this week, she said, the second I go into the grocery store, even though with my mask, I come back into my car, I spray my biocidin in my in my in my throat and I put the colloidal silver in my nose. This right here is year round, year round antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. It's phenomenal. Everything that it has in it. And we're running out of time here. So, but it's got everything in it. It's got oregano in it. It's got bilberry. I mean, oh good lord. It's got shiitake mushrooms, right? In it, a white willow bark, garlic grape seed extract, black walnut hole. I mean, it's got so, tea tree. It's got all kinds of things in there. I would keep this in my purse 24 seven year round. Use it the whole, use it the whole time. Okay. Flavonoids, flavonoids, flavonoids. Again, all the colors of the rainbow, your food. We've got to build up our cells to uh, inhibit the action of these, of um, this virus. Okay. I was reading today and it was, I mean, I assume it, but I just read it and it kind of hit me off, caught me off guard. Assume that everything is contaminated. I forgot to mention vitamin A. It's one of the antioxidants that you can use during phase one and phase two, right? A, E, or I'm sorry, A, C, and D, uh, phase one and phase two antioxidant. 10,000 international units a day, just as basic to build your immune system up. But, but you don't want to go higher. And pregnant women, you know, they don't need to do this unless they talk to their OBGYN. So if you're pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant, yes, it is habit forming. That's right, Elizabeth. But you missed me saying I'm not worried at all about it being habit forming during this. What we want to do is kill the virus. So three days on, three days off, not habit forming at all. Um, I don't use it either at all either. And it was in my it was in my closet. It expired like four years ago but it's probably still good actually. Uh, but no, I'm not worried about it um, creating a, um, a habit at all 
during this. I would never use Afrin on a daily basis, but I don't have any sinus problems. And you really won't if you cut dairy out and you use your colloidal silver in your nose. Okay. So we're going to assume everything is contaminated, right? Everything is contaminated. We're going to kill it all. Um, so these killer, these cleansers are going to kill most everything. They're going to kill most viruses, not just coronavirus, right? On hard service within 30 seconds, straight up, which I don't ever buy. And I had to go get bleach, right? Straight bleach, straight whoa, hydrogen peroxide right here. Hydrogen peroxide, high powered one. I've had that one forever. Straight bleach and then alcohol. What kind of stinking nurse practitioner doesn't have any alcohol in her house? I don't have alcohol. I didn't go get bleach. I didn't have any bleach either. But that those three things will kill COVID-19. Okay. Within 30 seconds of contact. Clearly. The studies have been done on hard, non-porous surfaces. Alcohol, per peroxide, or bleach will work on the countertops, but it may not work on your skin, which I wouldn't recommend putting bleach on your skin, or other porous surfaces. If you choose to use bleach, make sure don't mix it with ammonia because the combination, you know, makes a deadly gas. Don't ask me how I know that one. Um, Purell hand sanitizer. Purell. Now, see, I don't have hand sanitizer other than thieves in this house because I never believed in hand sanitizer. So, but... Purell is 70% alcohol and it might be an adequate substitute for soap. But remember, the contact needs to be done for 30 seconds. I'm not going to do it, but you've got to rub it for 30 seconds. I use Thieves, uh, which they're sold out. This is from Young Living and that's my favorite right there. Clean your doorknobs, clean your phones, clean your computer, clean your handles constantly. Again, assume everything is contaminated right now. Microwave ovens. I don't ever use my microwave. My microwave is right there. You can see it up there. I rarely use it. It never has to be cleaned. Unlike when I was growing up or my kids were little, I used my microwave quite a bit, which is terrible. In one study, COVID-19 died within 20 seconds of being in the microwave. Okay. So it probably kills all the nutrients and all that too. But you know, it's, it's, it's okay during this season to use your microwave a little bit. You may consider reheating your food in the microwave and uh, 20 seconds is, is not going to kill you. Your face masks. Uh, where'd my face mask go? Right here. The CDC has actually, you know, reversed its statement that the general public should not wear their face mask. And I was glad about that. Do you all remember back in January when I ordered this before we really even knew any of this was really going on or to the public wise? People thought I was crazy. I was the only person in the airport in New York City, of all places, the only person. I don't remember if y'all remember, I took a picture on the airplane and I was the only one. I came out of the bathroom and I was just facing um, the back of the airplane or the whole airplane. Everybody's just looking at me like I was a freak with my mask on. Nobody else had a mask on. I didn't know COVID-19 was coming to town, but I was just trying to protect myself from the flu. So wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. Don't touch your face. Try not to use cash. Use your credit card or your debit card instead because cash, we know it lives on um, money. So use your credit card and only you touch it. When you go into the grocery store, if you're going in, put your mask on. Don't take your phone in. It's a breeding ground. This is a breeding ground for COVID-19. Don't take your phone in. Don't take your purse in. Put your credit card in your back pocket and go walk in. That's all you need. And of course, take your bag in there with you. Um, steam, steam, steam. I cannot believe this. Right before I finished this um, today, I was reading steam. And Tika, our phlebotomist, has been telling us, steam everything. Put your face over a huge pot. So one of those big pots right there is getting ready to be heated tonight with oranges and onions is what some Jamaican Rastafarian that she follows online said. He told her this, he said this two months ago. She said, you gotta be steaming your face over it. Now don't burn yourself. But Dr. Berkson, it was on her website today. That opens up the lungs, that opens up the, the airways. So steam, I remember I used to put my, my head, my, a towel over my head and put it over when I was a high schooler trying to steam my face. And I'm gonna do it again tonight. I'll show y'all a picture. Get in the sauna, 
If you have a sauna, you need to be using it. That was one of the ways too. remember heat kills the COVID-19 we believe dies in high heat. So get in the sauna, steam your face, but don't burn yourself. Stay home slow the spread. Remember, we're not trying to stop. We're not killing the virus. We won't kill the virus. We're just slowing the spread. All right. Don't shake hands with people. All the things, you know, don't touch your hands and mouth. Number one, avoid crowds. Man, and I am a crowd hugger, lover kind of person. I thrive in a crowd. So I've had a real hard time mentally trying to get through this. Um, so, you know, don't get in a crowd because you don't know who may be infected. Continue your social distancing, wash your hands for at least 27, 20 seconds, and do not use antibacterial soap. Use Plano soap and water, people. Plano soap and water, okay? Testing. So here's the thing. We don't know if you're immune. Generally, as a rule, immunity happens after an illness, right? Like chicken pox or mono, although you can reactivate mono. I mean, immunity happens once you have an illness. We don't really know if we're immune or not to COVID-19 after we get it. We don't know if you can get it again. Testing is open. Anyone can test in the state of Tennessee. The governor opened that up. Anyone can test. So, I mean, heck, we've had 97,000 people test today. If you've tested, just answer. I put a poll up. Has anybody tested? So just answer yes or no. I'd love to know. I've had several patients test and they all tested negative. But again, it's not a perfect test. Just because you test negative does not mean you don't have coronavirus. So just know that it really depends on who gave you the test and the lab where it was um, read. So just know that just because you have a negative doesn't mean you don't have it. The antibody test is out now. Do you want to have it done? Do you know? Have you done it? Do you have any idea if you have immunity to it? I don't know. How do you feel about herd immunity? Should we all be out just touching up and loving all over each other and all and trying to create herd immunity? You know, that's a that's a loaded, loaded question right there. But again, these are common sense, practical ways to build your immune system. Phase one, right? We got to boost your immune system. Vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, things like that. Um, your probiotics your prebiotics, your mushroom extracts, right? Eating an anti-inflammatory diet, moving your body, all those things in phase two, that's the pro-inflammatory response, right? We want to cool down, cool it down, cool the immune system down. We want to dampen that immune system a little bit. We want anti-inflammatories in our body. Things like um, um, flaxseed and quercetin and cumin, uh, not cumin, curcumin, things that cool the body down, fish oils, things like that. Um, no mushrooms, no elderberry, those things, okay? Bottom line is we've been given a reset button. We've been given a pause button. We've been given a gift to turn things around. And I think the the shame in all of this and the the uh, tragedy and all of this, people dying, that's all horrible. That is horrible. Any one death is, is way too much. But but a second tragedy out of all of this is if that we don't pay attention to what's been given to us. We've been given a breather, a break, a pause, a reset, restructure, reflect, all the R's that you could come up with, right? Um, we've been given an opportunity to build resilience in our body. And that's what we want is to build resilience. That's what we want is a resilient immune system, a resilient gut. Quran talked about that last week. And when we do that, we set our bodies up to fight whatever comes towards us. And it's key. It's key. Fight off anything that comes our way. We're going to build our immune system up. And if we get sick, we get run down, then we've got some reserves and we got some capacity to fight it off. But if you get sick and you're already run down and you're inflamed, you're already starting off in the negative and it's way harder to recover. It's way harder to, to get out of this because this is a deadly virus, but does it kill most people? No, it sure doesn't. In fact, it kills a tiny, tiny percent, but it does kill people. Um, but it kills, it kills a very 
small few. Set your body up for resiliency and good health every day, all year long. We don't need to be panicking. Now, again, this is a opportunity to make some changes in your life. And the tragedy for me is if you all don't do that, if I don't do that, make some changes, figure out what needs to change in your life going forward, right? Where do you, what do you need to automate, eliminate and delegate, right? Let's see here. They're hard times. This is hard times and we've got to reset and all those things, right? We're isolated. We're spending time alone. Uh, use it for good. Use it for good. Whatever it means to you, talk to your God, right? I mean, I'm a big believer. If you have God, you're never alone. So uh, talk to God, man. I'm sure he's had some conversations. He's not surprised. You know, people, he's not surprised by any of this. We may be surprised and be caught off guard, but he's not surprised. He's got a way of hitting the pause button again when he wants our attention. I looked up in the sky driving home yesterday from Kentucky and it was beautiful, beautiful. There was no fog, smog, nothing. No airplanes with chemtrails going up there. I saw a picture on Facebook or uh, Instagram last week that said, and maybe it was real, maybe it wasn't, I don't know, but it was gorgeous. From India, this is the first time in 40 years you've been able to see the Himalayan mountains from India. And it was so beautiful. So, so beautiful. So, you know, don't waste this time that we've been given. Build your immune system up. You don't need a crap ton of, of supplements. You need a couple of supplements. You just need to heal your gut and you need to honor your body. You need to sleep when you're tired and you need to move when you're awake, you know? Um, so anyway, create some space in your life to listen, create some space, be still, don't waste this time, take care of your body. It's not rocket science. I mean, it's just not, okay? This week or next week, I'm sorry, Shondi who's on here, bore up and she is show me healthy living. She is going to be with me next week and it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. She's put her website up there. So click on her link, go over there and get on her email list. She's brilliant. She talks all about one ingredient foods, all the things that we talk about, you know, um, she's really got a passion for helping families get back in the kitchen and cook. And this is the perfect time for her mission. Because again, as we've said forever, cooking is self care. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support more than ever. I've gotten so many messages, text messages, phone calls, emails, messenger, Instagram. I just love you all so much because I was pretty down and out, but we're still here. You know, we're hanging in there. We're open six days a week. I'm seeing patients via telehealth, even though it's a whole lot less tomorrow. I'm done at noon or 1130. It's like, what? But I'm using that time to work on the book. And you guys, this week, we're working on the poop well chapter. Here you or Last week, you all prayed so hard on the day that I was to speak and talk about the uh, sleep well section to, to my writer. And guys, we had the most successful session we have ever had in six months of working on this book. I need you to pray hard that Friday, hopefully we're meeting Friday, um, um, that the words come out what beautifully for poop well section. Okay. Cause it's getting there. It's getting closer, right? The supplement store is open six days a week. You know, we're making free deliveries within 20 miles. All you have to do is email info at dannywilliamson.com or call the office 944-3530. We're keeping Jackson busy and Friday's supplements are delivered down to the dotted line. I appreciate you more than you ever know. We'll ship your supplements anywhere in the in the country. I have people say, Danny, we don't want to use your online store. I just want you to get the money. Okay, that's fine. That's great. And we will ship your supplements. We'll, we're doing whatever it takes to keep the rent paid, the employees paid, and the utilities paid. So doing everything. I've laid people off. I mean, I've laid two off. My assistant's gone. Uh, one other employee's gone, uh, you know, until all this ends, they'll come back but we're doing what we have to do to survive, right? If you don't get my newsletter, you need to click the link up there, dannywilliamson.com, and you need to get our new, get on the newsletter list because we've got some big things going out. And I love you guys. Pray for favor. Pray for favor for me and for us and for all of us and just reset, all right? Again, this is not rocket science. Drink some bone broth. You don't have to drink brother, brother's bone broth over here for crying out loud. 
Go get your bone broth at Walmart that's organic in the box for $3 or whatever it is and drink you a little bit of bone broth every single day. You don't have to have expensive things. Um, just do what you can do, right? Do what you can do. Make the most of what you've got. All right. I appreciate you. I could talk all night. Thank you so much, Erica, Sarah, Sean. I love you guys. And, you know, I know I ran over, but... Um, that's usually me. I wasn't voted most talkative for nothing in high school. Um, pray for us. It's going to be a hard week. I think it's going to get harder the more this goes. Even <clears throat> Anyway, makes me um, sad. But I'm gonna, I do have some good pictures to share on Instagram of yesterday when I went up to Kentucky. I'm not supposed to drive into Kentucky. And I sat about... 10 feet from my mom outside her window and she read up, she put cards up and I zoomed in the camera as best I could. And my friend Kim showed up and sat over and it was really neat. My mom had her mask on. I had my mask on and there we were and it was pitiful, but we did it. And my mom called me today and she said, Danny, I really appreciated yesterday, which was interesting because she was mean as a hornet when I got there, like really irritable. I said, mom, I just drove two and a half hours to come up here. Well, maybe you shouldn't have. She said, but I stayed. I wasn't leaving. All right, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Next week, Sean D. Oh, I can't wait. Go to her website. Peruse her website. We are going to have a ball next week learning about cooking, getting the family in the kitchen. All right. You guys have a fabulous night. Please take care. I would be devastated if something happened to any of you. And um, yeah, I would. <laughs>